Okay, as we promised, John Huntsman for the balance of the show, the full quarter hour. Check out the interview. Governor Huntsman, thank you for joining us here on Top Line. Delighted, thank you. So I, I want to get right to something that Mitt Romney uh, did yesterday. He goes to Ohio. Two central issues for Ohio Republicans are the ballot initiatives, one on unions and the other on the individual mandate, and he doesn't take a position on these issues. What, what, what do you make of that? I mean, is that the kind of leadership that uh, you expect to see from a it, presidential uh, candidate? It uh, looks a little bit like uh, his position on the debt ceiling. Uh, a little bit like his uh, position on Libya, it uh, smacks a little bit of uh, leading from behind. Uh, this is a time when if you're going to be president of the United States, you show a little presidential leadership. That's by taking a position and leading out. Sometimes there's a risk associated with taking a position, but that's all part of leadership. Okay, so th these issues, I mean, let's take them one at a time. The individual mandate. Initiative to say no to the individual mandate when it comes to health care. No to the individual mandate. Uh, we talked about it in our state when we did health care reform as governor. It took us three years to bring about comprehensive health care reform, but we ended up putting uh, a market system together with a connector, expanding and broadening the marketplace. Uh, it isn't uh, immediately closing the gap on the 14 or 15 percent uninsured, but it's going to get us there because it was driven by an affordable insurance policy. Which is the problem? So, so, so would you support this idea of doing away with the individual mandate, saying that this? Oh, is absolutely. Just not the way to go. And we we do have an example of the individual mandate in Massachusetts. And what have we seen? We've seen costs on average go up about twenty five hundred bucks for the average family. We've seen quality go down. We've seen emergency room visits go up. And then uh, federally, we've seen uh, at least one circuit court, the Eleventh Circuit Court, basically say likely unconstitutional. But more than that. When you sit down with the small business folks in Massachusetts, or indeed in the country as they anticipate 2014, they say, uncertainty. I have no idea what my costs are going to be around the bend. And so they say, I'm not going to deploy capital in the marketplace. I'm not going to hire again. And that's part of the reason that we're stuck in neutral. We're trying to kick this engine into first gear, and it's not going because of that uncertainty. Governor, I want to t take a look at the big picture here in this race. You've had a front, front row seat for all these debates. You know more about the candidates' positions than anyone else probably on the planet, having seen it so closely. Can Republicans screw this up? You have such a big opportunity to take on an incumbent president with unemployment, a, maybe a once-in-a-generation chance to beat an incumbent Democrat. Is it possible that Republicans blow this? Of course. If we fail to focus on the truly relevant and germane issues, if we take our eyes off the 14 million who are jobless and the millions beyond that who are so dispirited they've given up, if we take our, our, our eye off the ball called uh, debt, if we take our eye off the ball called our position in the world, uh, continue going with you know, two wars simultaneously, of course we can lose it. And if we kind of uh, begin wasting time on the nonsensical and the silly issues Is that like happening? birtherism. Yeah. Listen, when I see one of my, one of my colleagues, uh, Governor Perry, who starts talking about birtherism again, uh, uh, I cringe. I say, as a party, if we're going to win this election, we've got to focus on the issues that are germane for the American family. That's expanding the economy, that's jobs, that's our position in the world. And when we get off on those fringe issues, we lose the independents in particular. The independents are looking for a home. And the independents largely are going to drive the outcome of the election. They hear some of that chatter, some of that nonsensical talk, and it causes them to, to turn and, and, and walk away. And we can't afford to have that happen. So what is Perry doing with that? I mean, he says he doesn't want a distractive issue, right? But, but, but he won't give a definitive answer on whether or not he believes Barack Obama is an American, natural-born American citizen. It's been settled, folks. It's, it's been settled. The, <laughs> the president's a citizen of the United States. I mean, how, how much more do we have to talk about it? Let's move on to the real issues of the day. Okay, what about one of those issues is we have a flat tax proposed by three of the candidates so far, three and counting. Um, at a time when we've seen income inequality grow, and the polls suggest some concern about that among voters, is a flat tax the direction the Republican Party should be going? Oh, I think it's a good move for our country longer term. We have uh, income inequality in part because the economy has failed. There isn't enough in the way of opportunity. There's joblessness. And when you have joblessness, you can't expand the base. If you can't expand the base, you have no revenue from which to pay the bills. I did a flat tax as governor, so I'm not talking as a, uh, giving an academic dissertation. I'm a practitioner of the flat tax. It took but us two years. What's wrong with the principle that those at the upper end of the income scale should pay more in taxes? Well, we need, to, we, we need to flatten the rate and broaden the base and provide more in the way of, of opportunity. 
Uh, I saw this happen as governor. We had an old, dilapidated, anachronistic 1955 tax system. It wasn't serving our, our needs in the 21st century. Uh, I phased out the deductions and loopholes. I lowered the rate. I broadened the base, and we simplified. And it brought the state uh, back to working order. Investment came in. Entrepreneurs became more active. College graduates hung around, and there were more jobs for and the revenue. We tripled the rainy day fund. We provided a tax. We started to pay teachers what I thought they were worth. We could do things that we never would have imagined. So should we do the same at the national level? Do you want, you want to move oh, to I that? Think the, I think the principles are the same. Now, uh, Governor Perry has proposed a flat tax as part of his overall tax reform proposal. So he doesn't fix it. He just is providing additional It's optional, option, by the way. It's optional, it, right? it's optional. I say, okay, if I'm gaming the system <laughs> with the current loopholes and deductions, I'm going to keep gaming the system. I mean, what kind of fix is that? And, and then Mitt Romney is kind of nibbling around the edges. And then you've got 999 morphed into 909, uh, whatever the latest zip code is. And I say, I'm the only one putting forward a program that calls okay. for a cleaning house, you know, okay, all so, the loopholes and deductions. So, so tell me, I mean, you know the conventional wisdom. The conventional wisdom is that, is that basically you're done. I mean, that, that you haven't broken through. There was one poll that actually had you at 0%. Um, so what, what, what is it? What, why? have you not taken off and, and what's the path? I mean, do you, do, you, do you, how do you restart this campaign? It's early. There has been no uh, primary or caucus vote. We're taking off in New Hampshire. Just watch the numbers steadily increase. We've done 80 events in New Hampshire. New Hampshire is the old fashioned marketplace. You've got to stand before people. You've got to share your vision with them. You've got to answer their questions. But no one's they, been there more than you have, and, and still there's, there's, you're getting out polled by a, by a number of the candidates. Mitt Romney looks like he's running away with it by all the polling. Well, he's, uh, he's the homeboy, so to speak. Uh, he has name recognition. That doesn't mean that there's uh, a deep reservoir of, uh, of go-to-the-mat uh, uh, belief in his cause. Uh, we've gone from zero in New Hampshire to 10, 11 percent in a recent poll, and I say, we're moving in the right direction. Uh, and I sat down with Lamar Alexander the other night for dinner, and he brought me the data from when he ran in New Hampshire yeah. in 96. He said, let me just show you where I was. He said, this thing moves very, very quickly. If you've got a message, which I do, and if you connect with people, which we're doing, uh, you move the market. Uh, we're moving the market, and as we move the market, it improves fundraising. People see that you actually are coming uh, out of nowhere with a message and with real experience. And you look at the list of people there, and you say, who can, who can stay standing at the very end as a viable alternative? Uh, I mean, you can look through the list and see who can uh, remain as a viable alternative. We'll be a viable alternative. I have no doubt about that. New Hampshire's must win for you, though, right? I mean, do you drop out of this we, race if you don't win in New Hampshire? We, we, oh, never say never. <laughs> yeah. Never say die. Uh, we have to do well in New Hampshire. There's no question about that. As Senator Alexander knows, as, as Mitt Romney knows, one surefire way to move the needle is to spend a lot of money on your behalf or have someone, have, have someone spend that money. There's been a lot of talk about a super PAC coming in here. Obviously, you've got significant family resources through your father. Why aren't we seeing that? Do you, think we'll ex do you expect that we'll see it? I know that has to be separate from your campaign. Do you expect, though, to see some significant spending to get those numbers up? Well, as I told Stephen Colbert the other night, we can't talk about super PAC activities. Uh, it may or may not be there. Uh, but I also worked uh, as a national co-chairman for John McCain uh, a few short years ago when he was in New Hampshire. I remember introducing him to crowds there, small, <laughs> and they grew over time yeah. with nothing, zero. Uh, that's why New Hampshire, being the window through which people begin to see this race mature and materialize, is so critically important as a first primary state because you've got to be real. You've got to be who you are. There's no artificiality. It's about ideas. Okay, but if by some miracle you don't win, okay, <laughs> just, just, just help. Just, let's just you sound skeptical, Jonathan. No, I can't I'm not. Let's that. just say, let's just say it doesn't happen. Um, could, could you live with Mitt Romney as the Republican nominee? Of course. I will, I will support uh, whoever the Republican nominee is, whoever has what it takes to get through a trying and rigorous uh, primary season, which brings out the best in people. No, uh, I, I will support. If, if right now the, the two prohibitive frontrunners, it would seem, if you believe the polls, are Herman Cain and Mitt Romney, who, who's a stronger candidate against Barack Obama? We'll see. Time will tell. Uh, all I can say is that uh, Herman Cain and I were at the same level uh, in the polls just a couple of short weeks ago, and it shows how fickle and uh, yeah. unpredictable these numbers are. And I say, if we do what needs to be done uh, with the next two uh, months to go before the early primaries, we have plenty of time to make, uh, to make that needle move. And I like our position. The last thing you want to do is to flame out. Uh, right. You want to be a rising star as opposed to a shooting star. And I've got 
uh, I've got uh, uh, a, a sore neck uh, watching my colleagues go up <laughs> and down with such, uh, with such uh, uh, rapidity. Well, it's going to be a lot of time in New Hampshire. We look forward to spending time with you up there. And, uh, Terrific. And, and by the way, we, we, we love uh, your daughter's Twitter feed. It's uh, <laughs> one of the most entertaining aspects of the campaign. You know, Abby so. learned her stuff right here at ABC. <laughs> right here at ABC, indeed. Right, right. Right. John Huntsman, thank you. For thank you so much. I appreciate, appreciate it. it.